Now let's see about storage organization or storage allocation strategies. Uh, here there are uh, three types of storage allocation strategies are available. The first one is static allocation, second one stack allocation, third one heap allocation. So the first one is static allocation which can also be called as static memory allocation. Uh, second one is stack allocation. Third one is heap allocation. Here this stack allocation and heap allocation comes under dynamic allocation. So mainly we have two allocation strategies. First one static allocation, second one dynamic allocation. So in dynamic allocation we have static allocation, stack allocation and heap allocation. Now let's see about uh, static allocation. So this is nothing but uh, the static memory allocation uh, which we use as in uh, C language. Uh, now let's see what is static memory allocation. Uh, the allocation of memory during compilation time is known as uh, static memory allocation uh, for normal variables that is nothing but uh, for ordinary variables as well as for array variable for arrays the memory will be allocated during compilation time so once the memory was allocated during compilation time then it is not possible to change its size during runtime or execution time now let's see the drawbacks of uh, static memory allocation uh, here i am giving the drawbacks by keeping arrays in mind uh, let's see the drawbacks of uh, static memory allocation the first drawback of static memory allocation is we must know in advance regarding the size of the array. Uh, let us assume that uh, we are performing operations on 5 elements. So the size of the array should be A of 5. Let us assume that we want to perform operations on 10 elements. So then the size of the array is A of 10. So we must know in advance regarding the number of elements to be stored in the array. And the second drawback is, uh, if more memory is allocated than required, then memory will be wasted. And let us assume that uh, the memory is allocated for 100 elements, uh, whereas we use only 5 elements. So memory was allocated for how many elements? 100 elements, whereas we use only 5 elements. So what will happen here? More memory is allocated than required. So here 95 elements memory will be wasted. So this is one more problem. Now let's see the third drawback. If less memory is allocated than required, then it causes the problems because it, it is not possible to perform the corresponding operations. Let us assume that memory is allocated for only 5 elements, uh, whereas uh, we perform some operations on 10 elements. So memory is allocated for 5 elements whereas we perform operations on 10 elements. So we can perform operations only on the first 5 elements. It is not possible to perform operations from uh, the elements from 6 to 10 elements. So it causes the problems. We can't perform the operations in an effective manner. And one more problem with static memory allocation is uh, insertion and deletion operations are uh, very very expensive here because uh, more number of elements needs to be shifted. Uh, let us assume that uh, we have elements like this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and I want to insert an element at begin position. Let my element is 100. So now what we have to do? We have to move all the elements one position to the right in order to store uh, the first element at begin position. So here we have 5 elements. So how many shifting operations are needed? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 shifting operations are needed. Let us assume that our array contains 1 lakh elements, then 1 lakh shifting operations are needed. So it is very very expensive, too many shifting operations are needed. Likewise, uh, deletion operations are also very very expensive. Uh, let us assume that we have uh, 5 elements like this and uh, we want to delete the first element. So here the logic is, uh, we need to place 20 here, we need to place 30 here, we need to place 40 here we need to place 50 here. So we have to move each element one position to the left. So if there are 5 elements, then 4 shiftings are needed. Whereas if the array contains 1 lakh elements, 
then 99,999 shiftings are needed. So it is very very expensive. So in order to overcome these problems, we use just the second one. That is nothing but dynamic allocation. So dynamic allocation means uh, the allocation of memory during runtime. So during runtime, the memory will be allocated for the corresponding variables and the corresponding sub program. Okay. Now let's see the first one here, first dynamic allocation technique. That is nothing but stack allocation. So we know what is a stack. Stack is a data structure which works on the principle of LIFO, last in first out. So last in first out means the element which is inserted last into the stack will be deleted first from the stack. Uh, here let's see for what purpose we are using stack. Whenever a function or a procedure call occurs, then an activation record then an activation record will be created for the corresponding function. So whenever a function or procedure call occurs, then an activation record will be created for the function. And that activation record will be pushed onto the top of the stack. So here mainly we are using stack in order to maintain the function or procedure information. So where that information resides, that information resides in activation record. So this activation record is pushed onto the top of the stack. So if there are five functions in our program, then five activation records will be created for the corresponding five functions. Okay. Uh, now let's see about uh, what is activation record. So whenever a function or procedure call occurs, then an activation record gets created and activation record information is pushed onto the top of the stack. Now let's see the model of activation record or fields of activation record. So any activation record mainly contains seven fields. The first field is actual parameters. Second field return values. Third field control or dynamic link. Fourth one access or static link. Fifth one saved machine status followed by local variables and temporary variables. Now let's see all these fields one by one. So the first one is actual parameters. So we know what are actual parameters. So actual parameters are nothing but the, the parameters which are declared inside the calling function. So the parameters of the calling function are nothing but the actual parameters. Uh, the actual parameters of the calling function are passed to the formal arguments of the called function. Now let's see the second one. Uh, return values uh, it is mainly useful in order to store the result of a function call so whenever a function is called then it goes to the function definition once function definition was successfully executed it may returns a value to the calling function so in order to store that value we use as the return value uh, let's take an example uh, let the function call is uh, a is equal to sum here we are calling a function called sum. Uh, let the return type of the sum is int. Next, to define the sum function. So whenever a function is called, then the control goes to the function definition. And the, here the last statement of the function definition is returning an integer value. So that value will be retained and it will be assigned to a. So by using a, we can store the, the result of the function call. Now let's see the third parameter. Here the, the third parameter is uh, control link or dynamic link. Control or dynamic link. Uh, let's see the advantage of the control or dynamic link. It points to the activation record of the calling function. So in order to store the address of the, the corresponding calling function actual activation record, we use as the control link. So let's take an example here. Uh, let in the add function, we called sub function. In the add function, we called sub function. So add will become calling function, sub will become called function. So in order to store the activation, in order to store the address of the activation record of the calling function, we use as the control link. So here, uh, what is the calling function? The add function is nothing but calling function. So whenever a function is called, then an activation record will be created. So this is nothing but the uh, add function activation record. This is nothing but sub function activation record. Here we have a field called control link. This control link contains 
address of its calling function activation record. So what is its uh, calling function? Add function. So this address is available in, in this control link. Now let's see the next one. The next one is uh, access link or static link. Uh, let's see the advantage here. It refers to the local data of the called function but found in another activation record. So by using activation link, we can store the local data of the called function but the data resides in another activation record. Uh, now let's see the next one. Saved mission status. So whenever uh, we call a function, then uh, we need to store address of the next instruction to be executed. Why? Because uh, after calling the function, the control goes to the function definition and once the function definition was successfully executed, again it comes back to the calling function. So the next instruction of the function call to be stored. In order to store that uh, next instruction address, we use this program counter. So it stores address of next instruction to be executed. That address is stored in program counter. Program counter always points to the next instruction address. It contains address of the next instruction to be executed. Okay. So that is the advantage of the saved mission status. By using this one, uh, it is a register which stores address of next instruction to be executed. So next one is local variables. So we know what are local variables. So we can use local variables inside a function in which they are declared. So those variables are nothing but uh, local to the corresponding function. And what is the last one? Temporary variables. So in order to evaluate an expression, we may need some temporary variables. So this is about uh, activation record. Now let's see about uh, the drawbacks of uh, stack allocation. Uh, it supports dynamic memory allocation, but slower than static allocation. Okay. And the second problem is uh, the stack allocation supports recursion, but references to non-local variables after the activation records can't be retained. So those references will not be retained after the activation record. So in order to overcome this problem, we use a heap allocation. The major advantage of heap allocation is uh, it supports the recursion as well as the references to the non-local variables after the activation record can be retained. So those references to the non-local variables after the activation record can be retained with the help of heap. Uh, so mainly we use as heap uh, uh, in order to implement uh, dynamic memory allocation. If we use a C language, uh, then we have uh, dynamic memory allocation functions like uh, malloc function, calloc function, realloc function and free function. So by using those functions, we can allocate the memory as well as we can change the size of the already allocated memory block and as well as we can release the memory whereas if we take java we have a new operator delete operator so by using those two functions we can allocate the memory as well as we can deallocate the memory so if you take some data structures we use this linguist concept in order to implement this dynamic memory allocation so this is about various storage allocation strategies